Am I wrong for leaving my husband after I found out that he had cancer? So my husband and I had been married for about 10 years before we started becoming distant. A little while after, he actually cheated on me with one of my close friends. After that, nothing was ever the same between me and him. Now don't get me wrong, I still loved him, but things could never go back to the way they used to be. Eventually, he fell sick, started losing a lot of weight, having trouble breathing, getting random rashes on his skin. So we both agreed that he should go to the hospital to get checked. So he went to the hospital and had to wait a few days to get the results. A few days had passed, so he went back to the hospital to get his results. When he came back home i asked him what his results were he said everything was fine there was nothing to worry about then he put his keys on the counter and hopped into the shower a couple days before i had lost my credit card i looked everywhere for it couldn't find it but the only place i didn't look was my husband's car so i grabbed his keys while he was in the shower and i went to his car to look for my credit card i was thinking maybe it fell out of my wallet while i was sitting in one of the seats while i was looking for the credit card i found a folder from the hospital he just went to when i looked inside the folder there was his test result it was a biopsy test that confirmed he had cancer so i went back inside to confront him for lying to me come back for part two this is part two of the story of me leaving my husband after I found out that he had cancer. So after I found the positive test results in his car that confirmed he had cancer, I went back inside to confront him for lying to me. I was sitting down waiting for him to get out of the shower. But then I kind of decided that I didn't want to confront him. Our marriage was already going downhill and I was already having thoughts about leaving him anyway. I mean, he did cheat on me with my close friend. I know this might make me sound like a terrible person, but I didn't want to be there for him. I didn't want to be his main support system mentally or physically. And cancer is a lot to deal with. I didn't want to be in and out of the hospital, spending multiple days there, sleeping there, paying all of the bills myself. It would be too much for me. So I decided I was going to pack my things and leave without telling him when or why. And I mean, he didn't know that I knew he had cancer, so he wouldn't think that I was leaving him because of that. So I knew I needed to leave before he decided to tell me he had cancer, so it didn't look like I left him because of that. So the next day, he went to work, and then I went to work. As in, packing all my stuff, and then I left. Afterwards, he kept begging me to come back, so I blocked him, and I haven't talked to him since. This is a story time of why I dropped out of high school on my first day. And when I say my first day, I mean my first day of freshman year. After this, I never went back. So like I said, it was the first day of freshman year and I have extreme anxiety. My anxiety is literally so, so bad. I literally get anxiety just by waking up in the morning. So I was super anxious for my first day of high school. I literally was running around the school. I could not find my classes. I walked into the wrong classroom several times. It was so embarrassing. But then I finally made it to my first class. I sat down in the front of the classroom. Bad idea. After running around the school and not being able to find my classes and walking into different classes that I wasn't supposed to be in, which was so embarrassing. My stomach was literally in my ass. My stomach was literally bubbling because of my anxiety. I felt so much pressure in my stomach I needed to let some out. And you know I thought I could get away with it, you know, a little silent fart. You know it was silent, but it was not a fart. I shit my pants. Then the teacher says we're going to go around the classroom and everyone has to stand up and say one thing about ourselves. Starting with me since I was sitting at the front. Now this is what happened like for part two. This is part two of why I dropped out of high school my first day of freshman year. So like I said, I just shit myself in class. And the teacher says we have to go around the room and everyone has to stand up and say something about themselves. And of course, I had to be sitting in the front of the classroom and I had to go first. So I just told her I didn't feel comfortable standing up and I'd rather sit down. But she said that I had to stand up and everybody has to stand up. So I clearly did not have many options and I decided that I was gonna stand up and so I stood up and everybody gasped even the teacher the teacher literally made everybody get out of the classroom and I knew from there on out I could not show my face in that school anymore I knew all day everyone was gonna talk about that one kid that shit themselves in class yeah the teacher took everyone out of the class and then I got myself cleaned up went to the office told them what happened they called my mom they let me go home I cried to my mom and told her I could not show my face at that school anymore and so she pulled me out of high school and I just did online until I graduated story time of how I found out that my mom was actually my older sister. My older sister never really liked me as a child. We were never close. I never knew why, but I was guessing it was because of the 10 year age gap. But I'm pretty sure she hated me because she couldn't even look me in the eye. I cannot make this up. She would not look me in the eye. But she never really talked to my parents either. She kind of just kept to herself all the time. Sometimes I have vivid memories of when we were younger and she would always be arguing with my parents about something and I always thought it had something to do with me. Well, I was right. It had everything to do with me because eventually my sister turned 18 and she moved out. For two years, I didn't talk to her at all. I honestly don't even think I had her number saved. And I'm pretty sure that she didn't have mine. Well, two years later, and I was 10 at the time, she reached out to me via social media. I'm not sure how she found my Instagram name, but it was just my name, so she probably just typed that in and found me. She DM'd me and told me that she wanted to talk about something very important and that she would like to talk over the phone. So we exchanged numbers and we called that same night. And she told me that when she was younger, my dad had taken advantage of her and gotten her pregnant and had me. 
This is part two of how I found out that my mom was actually my older sister. So like I said, my older sister had reached out to me via social media and told me that she was actually my mother. And so after we got off the phone that same night, I lost it at dinner and I went off on my parents and I screamed at them. And I told them that I would go to the police and tell them everything and I would tell them the truth unless they just let me live with my older sister. And they try to explain themselves and their reasoning was that they wanted to keep the family together because of their traditional values. And it would have just made their lives a lot harder going through all the court proceedings so they just kept the family together. And so they clearly didn't want me going to the police so they said that I could go live with my older sister. So she came to get me but she lived in a different state so it kind of took a while. I still had to stay in the house for like a week or so before she came. But I packed all my stuff and I was ready to go and when we went back to where she lived we immediately called the police and told them everything fast forward a little bit they did some dna testing my sister's dna matched as my biological mother's and then my dad was my biological father and they saw how the ages just didn't match properly so they took my father to jail story time on how i found out the fbi was spying on me for seven months at the time this was going on i was a junior in high school and in the mornings i would walk to school because my school was only like a couple blocks down but i always noticed there was like a gray minivan always going the same direction as me so i always assumed that it was probably another kid from my school and his or her parents was driving them to school and one day i left home early because i wanted to get food from the store so i went to a corner store and when i came out that same minivan was parked outside of the store and then i was like okay thought that that was weird but i walked back to school but i didn't go the normal way that i usually go i took a different shortcut that day because i didn't want to be late for school and halfway there that same minivan pops up again and it went the opposite direction of me because it was a one-way street by the time i got to school the minivan was parked on the side of my school i of course ran inside the building and halfway through class i forgot about the whole situation Running out of time, I'll post part two right after this. Part two on how I found out the FBI was watching me for seven months straight. For the first three to four months, a minivan was watching me, and when I started to catch on, they stopped showing up. But what got weird is when I got to school, every day my friends would just ask me weird questions about what I was doing, where I was going. And it was weird because I felt like I was being interrogated. After a couple months passed down, still being questioned, and I get called down to the principal's office. And I'm scared because I'm like, am I in trouble? What did I do? When I walk in, there's detectives sitting down. They then sat me down, started asking me questions. They laid out a bunch of pictures of me. And this is kind of how I found out they was watching me for so long. They asked me if my name was my real name, am I the age of my birth certificate, asked me if I was an immigrant, and I was so confused. And come to find out, they thought I was a mass murderer. As in like, they thought that I was the guy that was abducting women. When I told them, this wasn't me, I didn't do this stuff, man. They did some background checks, they got my family involved. My parents even wanted to sue because they didn't even know this was going on. Because at the time, I was a minor and I was getting questioned.